Hey guys, welcome to this crash course where you're going to learn everything about the OpenAI Assistant API. Not only are you going to learn the fundamentals of this technology, but you're also going to see it in practice as we build, create, and talk to our own assistants that we build using this website that I made for you guys. So if you're interested in building apps using this new technology, this is the video for you and you're going to learn everything in the next 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, real quick, before we start the video, I just want to mention that I'm giving away all the source code for this crash course and I'll put a link to it down in the description below and I'll also put a link to any helpful resources that I mentioned throughout the video. So all right, let's go ahead and dive back in. Before we can start coding, we have have to answer two major questions. First, what the heck are assistants? And second, how do we work with them? Well, according to the OpenAI documentation, an assistant basically has instructions and can leverage models, tools, and knowledge to respond to user queries. And so far, the assistant API supports three different tools, the code interpreter, retrieval, and function calling. So simply put, an assistant is basically a chat GPT model, but on steroids, where we can do some prompt engineering to give it some initial instructions, and then we can have it work with those models and tools it was talking about to respond to user queries. So the code interpreter is gonna allow people to write Python scripts. Retrieval is going to allow us to pass in PDF text files, CSVs, and other things to intelligently pull out information from those documents. And then finally, with function calling, we can actually intelligently create parameters to pass in to call different functions. So all around, this is super cool. So now let's talk about how we can actually start using these assistants. So to start controlling one of these assistants, we need to understand the four objects that we're allowed to control and how they all work together. So we have an assistant, a thread, a message and a run. So let's walk through each one of these one at a time. And then afterwards, let's talk about how they all work together. So the first object we're going to worry about is the assistant. We've already covered this a bunch. It's our chat GPT model, which comes with instructions and is also hooked up to all those tools we discussed earlier. For object two and three, our threads and messages, here's basically how they work. A thread is nothing more than a conversation where we're going to be passing messages back and forth inside of that conversation. So a message can have a text like you see on the screen, or it can have documents such as a text file, a PDF, PDF, and soon you'll be able to pass pictures back and forth as well. It, the OpenAI model doesn't currently support that for the assistants. And then the fourth object is going to be the run. And the run is where things get a little bit complicated, but it ties everything together. Basically what happens, a run assigns an assistant to look through an entire thread and basically look at all the messages within that thread to perform some steps on it. So that could be use the code interpreter to perform some math, generate some code, the retrieval to go look in through some documents. And once it's done doing its magic, AI magic, it's going to then add a new message to the end of the thread. So it's gonna look like a conversation. So let's look at the example they provided to hopefully make this all make sense. If we were to make a personal finance assistant bot, what we might do inside of that is we might start a conversation where we can say, hey, how much should I contribute to my retirement plan? That's obviously what they're doing. Then what you would do is then trigger a run. And we'll dive more into runs later when we're in the code. But what the run's going to do is have that personal finance bot, which is trained on basically, hey, this is how someone should get to retirement. It comes with a bunch of pre-trained instructions. And it's going to look at that message and go, ah, well, I don't know about your personal situation yet. But because you had, let's just say in this example, passed in a PDF which showed your weekly expenses, it could say using the retrieval function, oh, it looks like you're spending $100 per day. So I mean, 700 bucks a week, 2,800 a month. You need to be saving, you know, out of your paycheck, let's just save 400 extra dollars per month using this. So this is a concrete example of how it all works. But enough theory, let's actually dive over to the website I built you guys so we can see all this in action. All right, so now we're on to the fun stuff where we're actually gonna start coding. And we're going to be building and running our own assistants from scratch using nothing but the assistance API. And just to provide you guys a little bit more context about what we're going to do next, we are going to create the four objects that we just talked about previously. We're going to create an assistant. From there, we're gonna add some additional files to this assistance to help train it. And from there, we're gonna create our second object, which is gonna be a thread. From there, we're gonna start adding messages down here in this chat window. And fourth, we're going to be creating runs. So we're gonna go through each one of these steps one by one. And as we do it, I'm gonna show you the code that's happening behind this website so you can start to connect the dots and understand exactly which calls we're making from the OpenAI NPM packages that we're using to build this website right here. So let's go ahead and dive into our first step, which is gonna be working with the assistants. And so you don't believe that I just made all this up, I'm actually over here on the API reference for assistants, and I just wanna show you here's exactly what we're going to be doing. If you remember on our website, there was a few different buttons like create, and then modify, list, delete, you know, for our assistants, threads, runs, and so forth. This is actually where everything comes from. Over here on the API, you can see for assistance, you can do a create call and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do to create it. You can hit, do this to modify it, to list it. And all of these commands show up for each of the four crucial objects for assistance. 
So this is exactly where most of the code that we're going to be building comes from. So if you need to ever look at this yourself, I'll actually put a link to it down in the description below so you can access it on your own. But enough of that, let's actually dive into our own project. All right, so I've just pulled up the code. And before we dive into any specifics, I do want to mention that I'm using a Next.js project. So that means I'm using React. I'm also using TypeScript and a little bit of Tailwind CSS. But you can ignore all of that. The most important thing is, is that we're using the OpenAI Assistant API to actually build stuff. So that's what we're focusing focusing on. So I'm not going to go into any super specifics on how Next.js or React, any of that works. We're focusing mostly today on how to build assistants, you know, add threads, make messages and run them. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And one of the key things that I want to mention is I have basically built a backend route for each one of the CRUD operations for each of the objects. So that's what you're going to see right out the gate inside of our project. And again, this is all downloadable down in the description below. You can access this project and run it on your own. So what I mentioned is each one of these objects has its own backend route. And the reason why we do that is because when we're creating projects, we need to use an open AI key. So so you'll notice here I have a .env file and this is going to have access to my API key for using OpenAI. Now I'm going to delete this and this is a secret, but in your own projects, what you'll need to do if you use this is come over to the file explorer into this .env file and then add in your own API key if you want to run this project yourself. Okay, enough of that. Let's actually hop into how assistants work. The first thing that we want to do is actually create an assistant. So here's what that looks like inside of our code. What we're going to do is make a backend call to our forward slash API, forward slash assistant, forward slash create route. And here's what that's going to do. We are going to use our OpenAI function. And what we're going to do is pass in some instructions to create our new assistant. And we are just going to say, hey, you are a professional stock analyst, and I'm going to ask you some questions about the stock market, and you can use the documents I provide to answer the question. If you're not 100% sure about the answer, you can just say, I don't know. And then from there, we just give it a name. And then what's important is you can add tools. So what's important here is you can add those other tools that we were talking about, such as the code interpreter or also for function calling. So this is where you'll provide all those additional basically power ups to your assistants. And then from there, you can assign a model. And if you're using TypeScript, what you can usually do is come in here and then see all the additional options. But I don't have my shortcut set up for this right now. And what we're going to do is return that to our front end. Like I said, we're not going to dive into any front end code today, but just know whenever I create it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start populating this top header so we can see the new IDs that come back every time we create an assistant. And just again, if you want to see exactly what comes back, I definitely recommend checking out the documentation where you can see if you create a new assistant, what you're going to get back is this object right here where it has an ID, the instructions we pass up to it, the tools and so forth and so forth. So in our case, what we're going to do is go ahead and create our first assistant. And I'm going to zoom out just so we can see a little bit more. And when we click create assistant, what it's going to do is actually pass over those instructions and models and everything else up to our backend. And that's going to actually send it over to OpenAI and actually create our assistant. And the reason why I know this worked is because if you actually head over to the OpenAI documentation, go over here to this left side where you can see assistance. Whenever I click this, it's going to show a new assistant whenever I refresh the page and you can see that boom, we just added in our new mini stock analyst. So that's the name right here. So fantastic. So we know that this is working and it's actually adding over our new assistants. And if you click in here, what's cool is you can actually already see the instructions that we gave it earlier from right over here inside of our code editor. So fantastic. So we know everything's working, models and everything are working. And it just also has the appropriate tools that we gave it working as well. So this is a much nicer way to make assistants at scale instead of manually creating them like we had to do over here. All right, so let's get back to the code and actually start improving it. The next thing we want to do is actually just show off a few other features of the package when it comes to working with OpenAI. So one of the other things that we could do is click list. And whenever we do list, what it's going to do is actually show you all the assistants that you have access to. So what I do is it'll show it right now that I have two different assistants that I've made, the current one that we just made and one earlier one that I was testing. So you can see that that's happening over here. And we're just going to grab 10 at a time and show them in descending order. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing that we could do is also delete our assistants. Now this does is all you have to do is just specify which assistant that you want to delete. And in our case, we're just going to pass that up to our back end. And then we're just going to call OpenAI beta assistants and then Dell. And this will delete the assistant that we passed to it. So in our case, it's just going to pass up this assistant ID and delete it. So I'll show you it in action real fast. So if I click delete, what's going to happen It's going to say delete and boom, it's been deleted from our front end code. And if we click list, now it'll only show one assistant down here. 
So fantastic. We know that our these three functions are working. So it's going to go ahead and create a new assistant once again. And now we're going to move on to the next step, which is actually going to be providing additional context to that assistant. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and upload Tesla's earnings so we can actually start asking it questions about it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And real quick, it's important to mention when it comes to attaching files to an assistant, you actually have to do two things. First, you have to just upload the file in general to OpenAI, and then you can attach that uploaded file over to the assistant. So let me walk you through what I mean. First off, what we're going to do is upload this file and it's actually going to trigger this code. And the reason why I know to do it is if you head over to the upload file documentation over on the OpenAI website, it's going to tell you to upload a file with a purpose over to this endpoint. And if we hop over to our code and scroll down, what you'll notice is I'll have a file upload route. And what I'm going to do in that is actually handle uploading a new file to that specific endpoint. In our case, I'm going to be using the OpenAI files create command to upload our new file stream. So here's what that looks like in action. First, I'm going to come back over here and click upload, and I'm going to upload those Tesla earnings I was talking about. And this is going to pass our file over to that our backend and our backend is going to pass it over to OpenAI. That's exactly what's happening down here. And what's cool is we're going to get a response with the actual ID for the new file that was just created. And the reason why we know that exists is because if you scroll down here, you can see we get back a file ID and some other interesting information about that uploaded file. Cool. So now we can move on to the next step where we can actually attach that file we just created over to our new assistant. So let me show you what that looks like according to the documentation. So if we head back over here and we go over to the create assistant file, what you'll notice is what they need is the assistant ID and they also need a file ID. So what they show in their example code is you need to call this endpoint with an assistant and tell it the file ID that you want to attach. And that's exactly what we're doing over in our endpoints. So if you come over to our file explorer and come down to the assistant file and look at create, you'll notice we're doing something very similar. What we're doing is grabbing the assistant ID and file ID that gets passed to us. And then we're calling that OpenAI assistant file create and we're passing in those two values to attach our file to the assistant. So let's go ahead and look at this in action. So I'm going to click create and what it's going to do is attach this file to that assistant and fantastic. So everything's looking great now. And what you'll notice is I now can click a list and it'll show me all of the files attached to this assistant. And this once again comes down from over here. So in the R assistant file, if I click list and route, you'll notice that this is the command we have to run. It's just assistance file list, and we just pass in the assistant ID, and it'll tell you all the associated files for it. So when I click list, what you'll see is that there's now, well, I clicked it twice, but you'll now see that there's one file associated with this, so we're making progress. And then I can delete it, and what it'll do is remove that assistant file. Now if I click list, it should be empty. Yep, now it's empty, and now I can create it again. Fantastic. So this is all working. And once again, I should just mention that delete is back here. And what you need to do for the delete is just pass in the file that you want to delete and the corresponding assistant. Okay, cool. So now we've made our assistant and now we've uploaded our test earnings to it to provide some additional context that it can start to search through that document. What we want to move on to next is actually creating a thread. And if you remember, a thread is nothing more than a conversation. So I'm going to just go ahead and click create thread and let me show you what it looks like in the code as well. So if we come down over to threads and go to create, what you'll notice is it's actually a very plain, simple command. All we're doing is saying, hey, open AI, threads, create a new one. And that's it. It's actually creating an empty conversation for us to start typing messages. Now, this is where we get to move on to the fun stuff where we're actually going to start appending messages to this thread so we can actually start eventually passing them over to our assistant to analyze everything. So let's go ahead and start adding our first few messages to this thread. Oh, real quick, before we do that, I just want to mention that you can actually look at the files that we uploaded to our assistant. So if you head back over to the assistant playground, you can actually look at our latest assistant and then go down to the file section and you can see that that's the file that we actually just uploaded. So if you come back, you can see that this is going to be like file UCK. Yeah, something like that. And then you can see it down here. Whenever you click on it, you actually notice that it's the same file ID. And then you can actually go in here, download it. Now that we're down in the file section, you can actually like if you download this, you would see that this is the Tesla earnings. So enough of that. Let's actually hop back to adding our new messages. But I just want to show you that what we're doing programmatically is also happening in the UI. So I think it's really cool. But let's go back to adding our messages. And I'm just going to zoom out real quick so we can see exactly what's going on. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is now create a new message and send it to our backend. So I'm just going to say, hey, please tell me how much revenue Tesla made in 2022. 
Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna click send. And before I do that, I just wanna show you what's gonna happen when it gets sent over to our backend. So once again, if you go over to our file explorer and go to the message route and look at create, cause we're creating a new message. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. First off, what we're doing is we're passing along the thread ID and the new message. And the reason why is because this is a big paradigm change when it comes to working with ChatGPT models. In the past, you had to send up the entire conversation. And then what would happen is ChatGPT would do its magic and then send you back an entire new message that you would append. So it was up to you to manage the entire conversation. But now with threads, it's basically stateful, meaning it stores the messages so you in the future can come back and retrieve them. And so forth and so forth. So basically just makes your life easier. But with that being said, you do have to pass in the thread ID so it knows where to attach the message. So whenever I do this, what I'm going to do is send this off to the back end, and then it's going to create a new message like it just did. And then now you can see it in our little chat window. Now, what you might notice is a little weird is it's not automatically generating a new response. You know, in the old API, what would happen is it would automatically like stream a response saying, oh, the earnings was this or the revenue was this. That's not the case anymore. It's up to us to now create a new run. So let me walk you through exactly what happens when you create a new run. First, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull up the new command whenever we create a new run and walk you through exactly what happens over here. And also what I'm going to do is also pull up the documentation so you can see the life cycle of a run. So let's walk through this part by part real fast. In order to create a new run, what you need to do is pass in the thread that you want the assistant to look at. So not only do you need the thread ID, but you also need the assistant ID. And if you remember from our earlier conversations when we we're doing the fundamentals, an assistant is actually going to read through the thread using its tools and its pre-existing training, and then answer all the conversations and questions that were asked inside of the thread. So that's what's happening over here. And whenever we trigger a new run, here's what we actually get back from this run object. So what we're going to get back is this large object right here. And as you can see, there's, there's a few different things going on. First, there's the instructions. So this is, you remember, that's our training from earlier, and that's coming from our assistant that we have from earlier. And outside of that, we have some status. And the status is super important because this tells us what's happening inside of our run. So going back to our run status lifecycle, here's what can happen. First, what we can do is queue a run. And I'll show you this whenever we're back in the UI, you can see this happening live. But what's going to happen is whenever a run is queued, it can then move over to in progress. And then from in progress, a few different things can happen. It can expire if it takes too long. It can return back a completed status if everything works properly, or it can return back failed. And here's why this is so important. It is up to us to not only trigger the run, but we also have to continually poll to see the status of the run. So here's what's going to happen for that. What we're going to do is inside of our code is we're going to have a retrieve function. And this retrieve method, what it's going to do is it's going to grab the current thread and the runs on that thread. And what it's going to do is return an updated run status. As you can see in this function, what it's doing is it's going to say, hey, what thread am I looking at and what run am I looking at? And it's going to return an updated run object. So that's what you're seeing right here. So now let's actually hop back over to our code so we can start to see this in action. And before I click create, it's important to pay attention to these two different labels up here in the top right. What you're going to notice is whenever I click create run, this run is going to have a new run ID appear underneath it. And then this run state is going to change. No longer is it going to say NA, it's actually going to hop over to queued. And what we're going to do is every half a second, we're going to be pulling to get the updated state of the run. And whenever the run comes back completed, what we're going to do is update our conversation and messages inside of the thread. So I'm going to go ahead and click run so you can see this in action. So what we're going to do is we created it. Like I said, now it's showing here. Now it's in progress. And what it's going to do is take a few seconds to run. And whenever it's done, like I said, it's going to update our messages in here. It's doing in the meantime is actually pulling in information from that document we passed in. And this is awesome. All right. So it's cool. It actually worked. What you're going to see is not only is it returning a response like it normally does, where it says like, hey, in 2022, here's how much they made in each quarter and actually breaks it down and then makes a sum to tell you how much they made in total for the year 2022. But it's also adding these different sources. And we're not going to dive in this today, but you can actually look at the annotations that OpenAI is returning in its response to see the actual page and section that this is coming from. So this is super cool. And what you can also do is ask it additional questions to continue the conversation. And in addition to that, what you can also do is refresh the page. And what this is going to do is actually refetch the entire conversation that we just talked about. And if you remember, this is because it's stateful now. It's no longer stateless where we have to manually pass stuff up, store it somewhere and come back later and update our messages. This is all being stored on the OpenAI servers so we can come back and grab it at any point if we know our run ID 
assistant ID and thread ID. So that's super cool. But let's go ahead and continue our conversation so we can test out other limits of working with this OpenAI assistance model. And for the final part of this tutorial, I actually just want to show you how you can cancel an existing run. You know, if something's taking too long, you can always cancel it and then restart it later. So here's how that works. What we're going to do is make a new message to say, what are Tesla's profits so far for 2023. Now, what we can do is send this and before, uh, like I said, this will always just add our new message to the end. But now what we're gonna have to do is make our new run to actually run our assistant to look through this thread that we have going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create it and you'll notice that our run and run state are gonna update. And then I'm gonna click cancel. And what this should do is update our run state to be canceled in the end. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click create. It's gonna update real fast. And now I'm gonna click cancel. And what this will do is it'll take a second. Oh, it actually had a quick little error. Let me go fix that real fast. So that was a small bug on my part. Let's actually head over to the cancel function because that's what we were trying to do anyways and walk you through what I did wrong. So if you look at what it takes to cancel a run, what you need to do is pass in the thread ID and the run ID. And on my front end code, I was only passing in the run ID and it didn't have a thread. So that's what was causing the issue. So let's go ahead and try it again and try and get a new message and say, what were Tesla's 2021 profits and earnings. And it might not have this, but hey, we're just gonna try it anyway. So once again, we're gonna do send. And what this is gonna do is add our new message to the end of the conversation. Now we're going to click create a run and this is going to update it. And then finally, once again, we're gonna try canceling it. So we're gonna click create. It's gonna change the state real fast. Now I'm going to cancel it and then run canceled. So what you'll notice now is the run state is canceled. We're no longer looking for messages. So this was fantastic. So that's it for this. But that's right for this video, guys. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. And just to recap what you learned, you learned how to create new assistants you learned about working with threads and messages inside of threads and you also learned about runs and the run states so you guys are now officially an expert when it comes to working with the assistant api and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did i have a bunch of other tutorials and content just like this on my channel that you're going to want to be sure to check out right after this video but hey that's right for this video guys and i'll see you on the next one bye